you want to read? Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll read Logic Comics. You can okay. read mine. So just do the same thing? Oh, hi there. <laughs> this is James. Uh, this is my friend Elliot. And you're watching Philosophy Time. You got a one Some of your work develops the idea that there's a type of imagination that philosophers have uh, sort of underappreciated in the past. And uh, as I understand it, it's fairly linked to your work on metaphor right. and seeing things as. So could you tell us a little about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the kind of imagination that I'm especially interested, growing out of my interest in metaphor, um, is what I call perspectival imagination. So this is imagination where you, you're focusing on a particular thing and you're try or a situation, and you're trying on different ways of interpreting it or construing it. So you might think of just a non-metaphorical example. You know, I might be a um, uh, uh, an evangelical Christian, but I might try to make sense of. I might try to interpret and uh, um, understand how the world would look like from the perspective of a you know committed evolutionary uh, scientist or something, right? Um, and that involves taking the same set of facts in the world and shifting my perspective on those facts, right? What I think is important, what I think explains, what else. Um, but it involves reinterpretation of a given set of facts. By contrast, um, the kind of imagination that philosophers tend to focus on is what is aptly called make-believe, which is conjuring up or uh, uh, creating a certain kind of content in your mind. Uh, this is you know, closer to, say, fantasy or something, right? You say, ah, I imagine that there are six tigers in, a, you know, in the jungle, and they are walking in a certain way. Or I imagine that I'm being attacked by you know, assailants. And da, da, da. So there you are imagining either propositionally in something like sentences or experientially in something like you know, a rolling film. Um, some set of contents that aren't there, right? So that's a content-based metaphor. You're, you're conjuring up something, you're conjuring up a what that you're imagining. And the kind of imagination that I'm interested in is uh, focusing on the same what and then shifting how you're thinking about that. And that's clearly operative in metaphor, but it's also something that happens in a lot of other kinds of um, uh, thinking and uh, imagination. And I think philosophers haven't really paid so much attention to it because it doesn't fit in neatly with our overall model of how the mind works. So could you tell us more about what you mean by this seeing things as uh, in this in this ima type of perspectival imagination? So um, I think that the really so the really crucial thing about seeing as is that it doesn't just involve you know entertaining a certain set of contents. It involves structuring your understanding, your uh, way of thinking about uh, and those contents in a certain way, and thereby responding to those contents in a certain kind of way. So uh, there are two kinds, two in particular, two dimensions of structure here that I think are really important. One is um, that some features stick out especially prominent; they're especially like obvious to you in your thinking, and others are more sort of downplayed or marginal. Um, the other is that some features are uh, more central in the sense of explaining a whole lot else about how that phenomenon in question is. Um, so I can see how that's helpful or interesting for us to sort of be able to, to do. I mean, I can see how we, we might spend some of our time engaging in perspectival imagination, but I, I presume you think it's also important. useful, yeah. yeah, important to serious long-term endeavors and human right. thought. So, right. but. From what you've said so far, I'm not clear right. on why that's going to be. Right. Let me take a couple examples. So some warm-up examples, and we'll get to increasingly intense, uh, important cases. And what's interesting about a lot of fiction is not just that you conjure up some interesting, you escape to an interesting other world that's fun to you know dwell in for a little while, but rather you get into somebody else's head. And part of what that means is understanding how they take on the world, how they encounter it, how they structure and understand and interpret the world around them. Um, and that can be a real, that's, we feel like we're learning something really important about other people when we gain that kind of thing. And you still might think that's kind of frivolous, but you might think that's the kind of thing that I think can be really important and useful for, um, uh, for instance, the possibility of genuine political discussion, right? So uh, a lot of times it looks like persistent disagreement about uh, a range of topics, but especially, uh, most obviously, you know, religion, politics, things like that, 
it's a it bottoms out in a, a question about like what should we do about X right now? But the reason that disagreement isn't resolvable is because there's these different background perspectives. And so to the extent that we have tools for manipulating and trying on different ways of thinking about uh, how other people are engaging with the world, to that extent we might actually achieve a kind of understanding that would allow us to make some kind of progress.